Hi Aries, welcome to your October 2020 astro update. It's Raina here. So, um, okay, well you probably, or you might know that your opposite sign is Libra. So um, this is a Libra month since the sun is in Libra until the 22nd of October. So relationship issues can certainly come to the forefront at this time. And speaking of which, on the very first day of the month, there is a full moon at nine degrees of your sign. So, um, it, you know, the other thing that I want to say is that there's a blue moon in October on Halloween, no less in the sign of Taurus, but we'll get to that in a little bit. I just want to mention this full moon in your sign. And in general, um, this can be a great time to let go of some aspect about yourself. Now, interestingly, this is one of those situations where for some people it's in the 12th house and for some people it's in the first house and for everyone, this can still be about letting go. So if you're born between zero and nine degrees of Aries, this is actually going to fall in your first house of the self. But this is the conscious self. This is the self uh, that you, you know that you're projecting onto the world, onto others. And so um, there's nothing unconscious about it. It's, it's the image that you project. Um, so it could even be the clothes that you wear, the mannerisms that you have adopted. This can be um, your life as a whole in this time frame. And I would say, especially with the with um, Aries rising, that this would be the case. Because it's kind of the mundane events and letting go of some of those or something coming to an end that, that creates a sense of closure, like a sense of the delineation between cycles. Um, for those who are born, uh, you know, this is going to be general, I mean, uh, specifically between 10 and 29 degrees of Aries, or we could say, you know, in the month of, um, April, perhaps, uh, more than March, if your son is in, uh, Aries, but, um, specifically from 10 to 29 degrees, sun or rising, this is going to fall in your 12th house. And this is going to be something that is more um, on the spiritual level, on the, I mean, even the psychological level. This, when I say spiritual, I'm talking about the karmic level. And um, this is the house of undoing. So any kind of patterns, habits, that impede you from, um, you know, making, you know, having things um, turn out the way that you want. Maybe there's some something that you do that always trips yourself up. I'll give you an example. For people, for instance, some people are looking for love and they genuinely would love to find a partner, uh, in their life, but they are also afraid of being hurt or maybe they have low self-esteem and they don't really believe that they are worthy of being loved. And so in some cases they may cheat, uh, because that will give that other person the, um, you know, that will almost inevitably ensure that that other person breaks up with them. And that might be uh, more comfortable for them to deal with than to um, have to deal with the potential of actually being in a one-on-one -on -one intimate relationship. Or to have to prove uh, that really the, the narrative that they've told themselves their whole life, which is that they're unlovable is a lie. I really think that that happens as well is that people, you know, kind of like covert narcissism, 
people become attached to their victimhood. And part of that is telling themselves a story about um, how they've been done wrong. And then the proof uh, is not going to be there if somebody actually loves them. That kind of uh, negates everything that they have um, told themselves. And so that can be very threatening to have uh, someone in your life or even having like success. If you've always felt like a failure, it, it proves that you're a liar, you know, and I'm saying that kind of like, um, you know, not trying to accuse anybody, but just that, um, there is a tendency sometimes to believe the negative. Um, so in any case, um, this can indicate that you're able to let go of those uh, self-destructive habits. We can just uh, put it that way. Or something is illuminated about this area um, and maybe even, you know, how it's been for a long time. And the full moon is a time of endings anyway, so it makes it very easy to just let it go. And the second Venus goes into earthy Virgo, and this is your sixth house, and this is a very efficient house. So uh, is that romantic, you know, efficiency uh, with love? Well, you know, Venus in the sixth house can be love in the workplace. You know, meeting somebody um, in the workplace that you fall in love with or have some kind of dalliance. Um Venus can bring money, so this could be a raise. This can be harmony with coworkers or uh, some kind of harmonious work environment. Maybe you're changing where you work and it's much more harmonious. Venus is, I mean, the sixth house is also the house of health. So Venus here could be investing in um, a luxury item that happens to be um, promoting your health. I always joke that this is a Vitamix uh, transit because, you know, the Vitamix is the Cadillac of, um, or Rage Ro Rover would probably be a better one, more modern term, of um, blenders. On the fourth Pluto turns direct at 22 degrees of Capricorn, a fellow, oh, I was going to say, <laughs> I was thinking of Virgo, I was going to say a fellow Earth sign. And this is in your 10th house of career. Wow. You know, Aries, I wonder how career matters have been for you in the last dozen years since Pluto has been in this house, more or less, depending on what your um, midheaven is or the cusp of the 10th house of career. Um Maybe you've been doing some soul searching about ambition and what, you know, what it has done for you. Because I do feel that Aries people tend to be quite ambitious in general. And because you are ruled by Mars, the god of war, um, this may translate um, into, you know, for some of you, a rather ruthless type of attitude towards um, career matters where you're just, you really believe you have to just go and get them and stuff like that, which, you know, makes sense on some level um, because you are just a very ambitious person. And I think that Aries people in general tend to be successful I mean, financially successful, career-wise, that you tend to be successful. The question is, at what cost? And sometimes these, when Pluto is in the 10th house, it can sometimes be a fall from grace. So somebody, um, either a scandal or, um, I mean, when I say a scandal, it could, the 10th house is a public place. So it's how you are seen and Pluto can just take you down. And it's like kind of karmic retribution, I guess I would call it. I don't know if that, that is really accurate, but that's how I would see it. 
And um, because of this, this can lead to um, being humbled. And I, I honestly believe that this can transpire in a myriad of ways. Um, right now, Uranus is in your second house of earned income. So this can indicate wild swings of uh, fortune. So you have to be careful when Pluto is in the 10th house and you, you know, you're having this erratic money situation that you're not tempted to take an offer. Like if somebody is making you an offer that you can't refuse, that you don't, you know, that you take that offer if it's very sketchy, if it's kind of, um, underhanded, um, uh, Pluto is the god of the underworld. So anything that is a bit, you know, not on the up and up, um, that can lead to your fall from grace. And, um, and just bullying tactics or anything that we consider, consider the shadow side of Aries can come into play because, um, Pluto is very, um, power hungry. And so in the 10th house, you can be, you know, somebody who just really wants to climb up the corporate ladder, but are you really paying attention to who you're walking on to get there? And is that a moral thing to do? Because, uh, your ruler Mars is so concerned with ambition. You may just, it just may be, um, second nature for you to, to just push ahead. Even if, um, there is something that is kind of like, not really what you should be, how you should be treating others. Um, you know, Aries is a sign that I think sometimes gets misunderstood, but sometimes Aries might misunderstand how they are being perceived by others. You're naturally aggressive. Some people admire that quality or they don't, at least it doesn't bother them. Some people, it really bothers them. It's funny because it really bothers me. And I'm supposed to get along famously with Aries being a Sagittarian. It bothers me because I don't like pushy people. I have my own uh, personal reasons for this, but I just don't, it always rankles me when somebody is impatient and wants me to go faster or whatever it is. And, and the irony is that I can you know, kind of do that myself to other people. So it's not like I'm, but I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I don't think I'm as, I was going to say as bad as an Aries person. Sorry. I don't mean it like that. But, um, I just think that impatience and aggression can be the two things that, um, turn uh, people off to Aries characteristics, but the Aries person isn't necessarily being malicious because they're being, um, impatient or aggressive. It, it can, it's just part of the nature and impatience. Part of that is enthusiasm is that Aries people really are, um, plugged into life. And we can't say that about everybody. Some people are just going through the motions and they, um, they want some kind of a life that doesn't have too many, too much, um, drama in it, but on the other hand, isn't very interesting. So, <laughs> uh, Aries people, it's like never a dull moment. So I don't know how many of you can, um, relate to what I'm saying. If you're an Aries sun sign person, this may not be as, much something that has happened. It may be more on the symbolic level where you have had these, um, power issues show up almost like in an internalized way where you have to resist the urge and maybe you are kind of reforming yourself and perhaps the actual events, uh, in your life, uh, 
are more likely to occur here if your rising sign is Aries. Uh, so Pluto going direct, uh, to the bottom line is it's really uh, immaterial. It, it The Pluto retrograde is more of a, I would say more of a soul searching type of a thing. Um, now you also have Saturn having come back into this house temporarily through the, through, um, mid December of this year. And that can actually, even in retrograde, I think this can be very helpful because Saturn rules that house and can stabilize things, um, and make you more, I was going to say the word that came into my mind was moral. And then I kind of was going to just reject that. But I do think in a weird way, it can make you more moral because, um, Saturn wants to do things by the book. So it's kind of like a relative morality because true morality isn't based on uh, what the law is. It's based on what is right and what is wrong in a situation. And um, some people, you know, just obey the law because they don't want to get in trouble, but that's not true morality. They might just be afraid of going to jail. True morality comes from within. They say it's what you do when nobody else is looking. And that to me is the truth. So whatever this relative morality is, um, or respectability, we will say with, um, Saturn here, it can lend itself to restraint when it comes to Pluto, because Pluto might, you know, be tempted to run roughshod over others to, you know, when you get that taste of power, maybe you do, maybe you have ascended to some, uh, position of authority and are you going to be the tyrant or are you going to be that positive boss? Like the queen of wands, who's always encouraging her underlings, um, by playing up their talents and not being the autocratic type of boss. On the 13th, Mercury turns retrograde, 11 degrees of Scorpio. And um, this is that eighth house. This is, this is that um, deep diving house, the house of the shadow. Do, do Aries people just in their natural habitat tend to be these deep divers? No, you're not because you're very active. And there's a there's actually a good side to this because I do respect people who, um, I'm, I'm just being facetious here saying, you know, who, um, what do they say? Like, um, meditate on their belly button or, um, yeah, something like that. When you're fixated talking about like kind of doing a lot of meditation and, uh, self-analysis. I respect that, you know, going to therapy and trying to better oneself, but sometimes that can lead to neurosis because, um, there are people who are quote unquote working on themselves and that gives license to be a narcissist, to be self-absorbed, to always be thinking about oneself, talking about oneself, even if you have to pay somebody to do it. And like I said, there can be a positive side to that, but when it is excessive, it's just another way to, um, you know, maybe stay even stuck in the past. And I admire Aries people because they tend to always push forward. And, um, by no means am I saying that if you go to therapy, you're going to be neurotic or stuck in the past. I'm speaking of, and I'm not even just speaking of, um, therapy. It could be even a meditation practice. It could be, um, a support group. It could be anything that, um, doesn't, you know, take the past and use that as a springboard to the future. I believe that a lot of people that get stuck in the past are people who want to change the past. I think I read that somewhere. I wish I could have uh, made that up, but 
I think I, I might have read that somewhere. And it really resonated with me because I, I do believe that that's true. And you can't change the past, can you? So the key to Aries people is to um, be reflective, is to have times in your day when you're not just moving physically, but you're actually uh, able to sit still and able to look within. Now, of course, you can look within and be taking a nice long walk. You know, you can do that, especially if you are kind of hyperactive, which I suspect that some of you are. Um, definitely um, do that. But I do think that practicing sitting still is a worthy um, goal because, you know, there's a saying, be still and know. And, and just spending time in solitude as well. This is not something that is, you know, what you typically do, but it, but the eighth house is this house of like, you know, the, um, the shadow and Mercury is the mind, you know, working through this. Now, Mercury is going to go back into Libra. So that will be that seventh house. And, um, by the way, Mercury through these two houses could be some kind of, um, you know, um, whatchamacallit, like a will, because Mercury can be a contract, like a will or some kind of document that um, you have to, you have to go over because something isn't quite right before it can be submitted finally. And, um, yeah. So, um, that might even be, if, if you're getting divorced, there might be something that you're thinking about with the money situation. Like, okay, what do we do here with the money? Um, and kind of hashing that out and like, you know, bean counting, what have you. On the 16th, we have a new moon at 23 degrees of Libra. Again, if we look at the different Aries people, the people that are from zero to 23 degrees of Libra, this is falling in your seventh house of committed partnership. And that might be a time when you're coming to some new understanding in your uh, committed partnership. Maybe some people are getting married. Uh, October is a seems to be a big marriage month uh, these days because I, I'm assuming it's because it's beautiful outside and, um, you know, they can take nice pictures for the wedding portfolio or what have you. I don't know why, but it is, you know, at least in my neck of the woods, it's probably the last month that you can guarantee you'll have some nice days. So, um, but also when you think about it, if the sun is in Libra, then, uh, Libra is ruled by Venus. That's perfect for love, right? Libra rules the seventh house of committed partnership. This is where your new moon is. Uh, for those who are born, uh, th this is like two thirds of the, the sign, the first 23 degrees for those later or latter degrees from 24 to 29, uh, degrees sun are rising. This is going to fall, um, actually in your sixth house of, uh, work. So you might be getting a new job. You might be, um, this could be some kind of new health regimen that you're engaging in. This can be something that is connected to a new, um, daily routine that you have. And, and this is something that, uh, you know, 
An example would be somebody who has been working from home lately and now you're going back into the office place. On the 31st, we have a blue moon at eight degrees of Taurus. So it's a full moon. It's a blue moon. It's going to be seen all over the world. So I think that must be symbolic of something. Maybe that some event that brings us together that makes us see the light, uh, you know, that's going on. And uh, this Taurus is your second house of earned income. Well, once again, what degree are you? Zero to eight degrees, second house of earned income, maybe a raise, you know, uh, maybe some kind of money that is owed to you, is given to you. For, for the nine to 29 degrees, this is going to be in the house of the self. So, um, This is this idea of letting go. I mean, you, some of you had, um, the, um, the same people that had the full moon in the 12th house. Now you have it in the first house. And actually you, you guys are really starting to let go of so much, you know, not only on the karmic level, but now on the physical level. So that's actually very cool. Now, that may even have some health-related issues with it because this, the first house can be the body. And you just had Venus go into Virgo in that in that uh, sixth house of health. That might have been a time when you are trying to uh, make yourself um, harmonize your health. And this could be like the time when you're letting go of something that you need to do that, that you used to do that is impacting your body in some way. So this, this, oh yeah. The other thing too, which is really important is that this full moon is going to be in an exact conjunction with transiting Uranus at eight degrees of Taurus. So this is a great time to let go of a bad habit because um, Uranus can just make you break with it instantaneously. And your ruler, um, Mars, is retrograding in your sign. So that's even more of an indication because that uh, Mars retrograde is a time when it's easier to, um, to accomplish things. You have much more ability to maybe not the will to do it, but you can do you can do it because um, I forgot what the explanation was. I think it probably has something to do with letting go of resistance and having things come to you. So um, I think that that's really great because anytime I mean all of us have areas where we need to let go of something. And that is kind of creating some kind of barrier between us and success in a certain uh, area of our life. And, you know, we can use all the help we can get. Sometimes temptation makes it hard to do it on our own. So this, so these transits can be very helpful. Okay, that's what I have for you, Aries. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you would like a personal reading... The link is below. Take care. Bye.